This is Twit. I use Thunderbird, so my mail spools are all like in the hundreds of megabytes yeah. range. Yeah, too and big. so you add one email to yeah. you know, your inbox, yeah. and now you have to resync 300 gigabytes of But, of, you're, uh, but you're, you have an IMAP server, so you're fine that way, right? I mean, no, I not, don't use IMAP. Why not? Oh, oh, now I'm going to find out why IMAP's bad. Uh, <laughs> what do yeah, you use? I, use the Mellow. I still use pop. So I use pop for a lot of reasons. Oh, you don't want to leave uh, your mail on the server. That's it. Right. Yeah. So like, first of all, uh, electronic privacy act says that any file on a server for more than 90 or 180 days, they changed that. Abandoned. They changed that in, in California, not federally. Yeah. Federally. Well, maybe it was only California. Yeah. It was just California. Uh, all the attempts to modernize that have failed. That, that and also whenever you hear stories about people being breached, it's all like we then breached them and we had access to 10 years worth of their right. email. And that's right. how we were able to so comprehensively screw them over. Right. Uh, if you crack my email, you get everything I've got since the last time I my computer was connected to the Internet. Right. That's and then all. finally, yeah. it lets me do things like. Uh, carry a limited version of my email across borders and then cheerfully so allow smart. border guards to get that data. If Here, have my account. Yeah. yeah. Oh, I might have to rethink this whole thing. It's tough. It's a tough workflow, you know, and like my wife is always like, so uh, what are, uh, do you remember the details of that party we're invited to next week? And I'm like, yeah, when I get home, I'll look at my laptop and find <laughs> out what those details are. Because she's that used is, to searching Gmail on her phone, right, right? That is a convenience, I must admit. Yeah, but now now that we're finding out what Unroll Me was doing, uh, uh, you, your your point is really well taken, right? Yeah, because as soon as you yeah. sign up for Unroll Me, they have everything going, you know, back to when you started using Gmail. I have a colleague at the Media Lab uh, who works for the uh, Einstein Institute, which is this nonviolent uh, political protest um, research institute, and uh, she says that her philosophy is that uh, you should assume that if your adversary has a capability that they'll use it. Right, that's fair. And and so, you know, when you look at kind of what the surveillance and control opportunities are with technology, it, it, you know, a lot, of our, a lot of our fallback is assuming that the law will be obeyed or that the law will be sensible or, you know, that, that if the law is broken, we'll catch the lawbreakers before they can make mischief. And if you take away those assumptions and assume the law will be routinely broken and that there'll be no consequences for the people who do it and that after it's broken, whatever they accomplish through breaking it will go on, then you really quickly get to a point where you're like, no, I should just not leave this file on a server. I should not have my, you know, I'm just about to go and purge all my Twitter DM history before I start traveling across borders on this tour. Uh, so I can log people into my Twitter if they say you can't come into my country unless you show me what's in your Twitter account. You're, uh, you don't have dual citizenship. You're still Canadian? I do. Oh, you do. I'm Canadian and British, not Canadian and Canadian American. and British. Oh, so you're screwed. Yeah, but I have a green card. And <laughs> no, that doesn't help. Years, yeah, no, it doesn't help. Well, it helps a little, okay. right? I have more. It's, it's better than I, not. I can't. They can't just refuse me entry. What they did to green card holders during the Muslim ban chaos was they said, uh, we rec we demand that you surrender your green card voluntarily, which, you know, is a highly specialized definition demand. of voluntary, <laughs> <Yeah>. right? But <laughs> when you voluntarily surrender your green card, then all bets are off. Uh, there's also a, a thing that um, when you're crossing, if, if you are in border detention, whether or not you're an American and you want your legal representative to visit you, it is at the border patrols, uh, at the border protection agency's uh, discretion, unless there's this form called something like a G25. And it has to be, again, if, if they're not going to have any discretion, but it has to be on green paper. Uh -huh. And you have to sign it and give it to your lawyer before you cross the border, because the lawyer has to present it at the border Jeez. to gain access to you. <laughs> and so, you know, there's a lot of this stuff that's just silly and kind of Form it's predicated on the idea that people. B. Yeah, well, but it's predicated on the idea that um, the border guards won't be unreasonable, right? Because this is all stuff that just like like having the magic incantation of the green paper in the right form and yeah. in advance is is only in the like heretofore extremely unlikely event that someone from the border patrol denies someone in detention access to their legal representative. Right. And now we're like, well, what do we do? if the discretion is exercised by people whose discretion we don't trust. This is right. one of the reasons that I found myself very frustrated with British politics, is a lot of British politics is predicated on the idea of providing discretion 
to uh, to the political class and to administrators, right. and then assume that they will exercise that discretion wisely. Right. And it's so wrong, you know, like in a world where GCHQ like kidnaps Libyan dissidents and sends them to Gaddafi to be tortured, uh, like we shouldn't be leaving governments at their discretion.